two mega pops, an achievement in Blue's Tower Defense 6 where you need to place one tower down and then that single tower needs to get two million pops. You are not restricted to the number of towers you can place down in a chimps game if you're looking for two mega pops, but you want one single tower to get more than two million if you are after the achievement. And yes, we are not starting with a submarine, surprise, surprise, because we can place down a druid from the get-go. And we're going to help out our beloved druid by having Geraldo on the field. Now, I could have gone with, let's say, Obin in order to increase our potential for the druid, but then again, the Obin would still pops. Too many of them, to be exact. Round 9 is here, we can place Geraldo down, always place him down here so that he does not yes. steal too many pops, but can be of some assistance in case some balloons escape from the druid's range. Apologies if you can hear a lawnmower outside, but alas, we are going to go with hard fawns, and we're going to go middle path. I don't want regrow balloons to be a pain later on, because when we summon tornadoes, they're going to blow back regrow balloons, and then those regrow balloons will obviously regrow. And we don't want that, because the amount of pierce that will be accumulated would be too much for us to handle. And of course, in the nature of two mega pops, we don't want too many regrows, because then we would have too many pops. We now have Heart Oak after getting Fawn Swarm. We have more of the Fawns to throw at the balloons themselves, but now we can de regrowify regrow balloons i know a lot of these words that we use in this game aren't actual words to use but they make sense in the balloons tower defense universe here we go there's some regrows and as you can see there we go yep the fawns are now removing the regrow property of the balloons themselves our thunder is going to be a huge help because that also de regrowifies balloons it's basically any attack attacks it's not specifying what kind of attacks you just have to attack a regrow balloon in order to remove its regrow property there we go there's our first challenge a camo balloon let's just put an invisibility potion on our Heart of Thunder, Heart of Oak, <laughs> Druid. Kind of ironic, but anyways. I was just thinking they both have the same name there at the beginning. But nonetheless, oh dear. This is not an all pops run. Start again, Flare Balloons. You have to get all the pops with a single tower. We will do that one day. Just not with this one, though. Because I don't think that would be possible with the Super Soul. Or maybe it is, but it's just stupidly complicated and stupidly long perhaps as long as let's say a Psy master bomber two tower chimps run which actually that video did really well i was really surprised by how much people have watched that video and i'm really pleased with the outcome of that video but the process of doing it was sometimes not worth it considering the huge amount of retries that I had to do in order to complete that scenario. Chand Editor is a blessing, otherwise I would not be able to try and do round 70 again for that scenario. We're going to go for a village next because we want some permanent camo detection. And then afterwards, eventually when we get the MIB, some definite purple popping. Because at the moment, the only thing that's been affected when it comes to the tornadoes and the lightning is well the lightning gets stopped and the tornadoes only blow back the purples and not pop them <laughs> if you think this is long you are going to be in for a treat to see how long it takes for this tower to pop the fortified zmgs on round 97 that round is going to be an absolute slog when it comes to the waiting time in order to go through the round itself Oh yes, we can get radar scan now. Almost forgot about that. So what are we gonna go for next? Uh, jungle drums will be good. They'll be very handy at this point in time. Okay, I'm gonna set this on last so it's always firing the tornadoes in a straight line, regardless of where the balloons are. And also the lightning will be able to deal with some of these stragglers that are around the bottom right of the druid itself. But so far, no troubles whatsoever. No troubles whatsoever. Some have escaped. Okay, we're going to put an alchemist down. Uh, 24 have escaped, but that's about it. 
We're going to get larger potions, acidic mixture dip, berserker brew, and we're just going to settle for 400. This means attack rate because of the tornadoes will mean you don't need to have either a stronger stimulant so that both the acidic mixture dip lasts longer or enable fast throwing so that when it runs out this will be able to apply the acidic mixture dip and the stronger stimulant onto the druid more quickly. Berserker Brew is there and I'm hoping that this is strong enough in order to go through this round of boys. We might have to level up Geraldo so that we can get some Jerry's fire but I don't think that's going to be a need for this so let's see. Yeah, I think we're dealing enough damage in order to deal with this. Yeah, that's definitely good. Absolutely good. And also, in update 38, the tornado is now home in on balloons rather than just traveling a straight line. So that's a real blessing. But still having a straight line is nice in a way. So that it's always going on the track. So like, let's say it's we're kind of a similar mechanic to the Dark Monkeys' Juggernaut Balls. You want them so that the projectile is always traveling along the track in a straight line so that there's always damage being inflicted rather than, you know, the balls themselves flying off the screen. Anyways, we've got stronger stimulant now and we're not going to touch you again when it comes to upgrades. Alchemist. MIB or Ball of Light. Yeah, we'll go Ball of Lightning. Then we'll go with the MIB. And then after that will be an overclock. Oh, camo purples. That could be a little bit of an issue if it wasn't for our thorns. Because the ma majority of attacks that this is churning out, two or three of them are magical slash elemental. But not in the cold elemental kind of thing. Anyways, we've got Monkey Intelligence Bruyel, which is brilliant. Which means that now purples are a non-issue. I was about to say that the fawns are now a non-issue towards leads, but having hard fawns means that the fawns it produces now can pop frozen and lead balloons. But do you know something interesting? The hard fawns upgrade also applies to the spirit of the forest's vines, but it conjures out onto the track. So with hard fawns, the vines that grow on the field around the entire track can pop leads. Once we get 14,580, we will be applying, sorry, purchasing the overclock, which then can be applied to our beloved Ball of Lightning, because I feel like we're going to need the additional fire ray. Wait a minute, how did you... Oh, probably because there was a balloon uh, right directly to the left of the druid, but we're going to need that additional fire ray in order to deal with the BFBs and the ZOMGs. Here we go, 14,580 to purchase the wonderful overclock in order for our needs to be met. For this to get to the later rounds, because I'm sure at some point there's going to be a pierce cap in which all of our attacks will meet, but won't be able to go over it because, well, we meet the max, and, so max, and we won't be able to pop any more balloons if there are too many on the field. Having Heart of Oak is really essential in order to not have any regrows or as little regrows as possible. Here's round 60. Can we, as the 420 Druid, deal with this BFB? With the combined might of our beloved Monkey Village, our beloved Alchemist, and our beloved Engineer Overclock, we will be able to do all of this. Most definitely. Also, Superstorm gets camo detection by default, so if you're able to do a Two Towers Chimps where you're able to hold off the camo balloons long enough with another tower, then when you get Superstorm, that will contribute towards the poppage of the DDTs, which are the biggest threat in any Two Tower Chimps or any Two Megapots run, or even just Chimps in general. Like, there is no scenario where you're going to say that the DDTs are easy especially the fortified ones and even the prince of darkness which is brilliant against dts it struggles against the fortified ones around 99 because it takes twice as much damage output in order to pop them let's see round 64 a bunch of these we're gonna keep the druid on last so it's always firing in a straight line the balls of lightning don't home in which is which is understandable because it's literally an energy-based thing that's traveling a straight line. 
but the tornadoes can move according to what way the wind goes and obviously these two but obviously ninja kiwi wanted to implement this for a little bit of time now and it's a good thing that they have done so also it's a nice change with the um tech ability with knockback applied you can knock back any surviving balloons aside bears and bosses for some support, we're going to be putting down a relentless screw with glue splatter, but we're going to, not going to be placing it too far to the left because when it comes to ZMG's only rounds, the glue splatter is going to ensure that it takes even longer for the ZMG's to be blown back to their desired position. So look at this. This is literally the ZMG later on, but it will be blown back even slower because of the speed in which ZMG's travel at. Not cool in the long run. So I decided to put it over here in the hopes that... Oh, damn it, the glue gunner has longer range than the Superstorm has. Well, that's going to be very, very handy. Although we could put down a invisibility potion on the Druid when it gets to the stage where it's going to increase the range of the Druid. So that hopefully we'll be able to blow back any ZMGs before these have a chance to glue them because it would just take that much longer to complete the rounds one more round before the infamous round 76 and honestly we've definitely got this in the bag absolutely no worries because of what this particular tower can do but i'm honestly amazed that this thing can deal with bfbs and you'll find out later on zmgs as well i'm honestly surprised by what this particular tower can do like look at them all there was multiple bfbs in there in this literally anti masses kind of thing is really going to town on them okay so we're gonna apply jerry's fire here and there just add a little bit more firepower you know it's not going to be a huge contribution but i feel like it will make a bit of a difference when it comes to all this and also when any of the balloons are being blown back, it still is able to pop them anyways, which is good. Round 78, what can this thing do against a huge amount of ceramics? And honestly, <laughs> the ball lightning with Heart of Oak, Druid makes that round super easy. Just blow them all back and just watch the carnage happen. The tornadoes are blowing the back and the ball of lightnings are destroying them. Round 79, a huge amount of regrow rainbow balloons, but with our attacks, we will be able to deal the damage needed to remove a regrow layer and remove their existence in their entireties. Okay, this is a big test. Fortify the BFBs. What can we do here? With the slowdown, it's nice. With this doing its own thing. I wonder if with Heart of Oak, it's able to apply that Heart of Oak feature to the Jerry's Fire so that the flames can also de regrow a fire balloons. I hardly... I doubt so. But it would be interesting to see if certain changes to a tower based on upgrades can also be applied to temporary upgrades like a Jerry's Fire or a uh, Invisibility Potion. You know, stuff like that. But this CMG is holding on well so far. But alas, there's not going to be anything in which we're going to be worried about because we are whittling this thing down quite well. The Alchemist is at 3,750 pops, which is not bad at all. Not too many pops. If we had stronger acid and perishing potions, this thing would probably be about 10,000 right now or so. You know steals a lot of pops with both the added acid strength oh these are getting quite far actually the added acid strength and the perishing potion were removing the fortified property off of non moab class balloons main namely the ceramics which are the biggest worry so that's why we don't want that let's see these are all going down quite nicely we are 24k sorry 21k away from the super storm and we are doing extremely well here. Still on last so that we are able to blow back these balloons when we are able to. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that was nearly a heart-wrenching moment there, which was bad. 
perhaps placing this over to the left would have been a bit more beneficial in this case. Because not just what's happening now, it's also what's happening down the line. Hopefully we'll be able to afford the Superstorm in the near future. We are, oh gosh, we are 16, nearly 16k away from it. There we go, 16k away from it now. Also in update 38, the Superstorm is considerably cheaper. To be able to do the Superstorm 2 Mega Pops before all of these benefits were added, then you would have been able to do this with even less potential with the Superstorm, in fact. I could have gone longer range, but honestly, I feel like the regrows are a bigger threat than the lack of range or less range from the Superstorm itself. Or in this case, Board of Lightning. Like, I always feel that some upgrades are better than just adding an attribute that increases something that it already has, like range or attack. Maybe it can do this thing. Maybe it can detect and pop camo balloons. Stuff like that. Sometimes an added feature in which a tower does not have already is better than just simply saying more firepower, more this, more of that, something that it already has. But never say never to that, obviously. I'll never say no to more firepower. But sometimes having something added in which it didn't have already can be a big blessing. Great. Two ZMGs. How are we going to handle these ones? We're still 2k away from the beloved Superstorm. As long as that overclock is in place, we'll be able to deal with these without a worry. But we're going to put the Superstorm... Sorry, the Ball of Lightning on first. So it's always targeting the frontmost balloons. I feel like trying to target this and then try and pop the, ZM the second one as well is going to be a bit of a pierce cap limit if you know what i mean it's going to really exceed what we can actually do and some of these are probably gonna escape yeah some of them escape down here and please deal with it like this could be one of our first flawless two mega pops runs as in like no retries no restarts no going to the main menu in case if you feel like you're going to fail stuff like that Oh, these are looking a bit tight. Oh, but we can now afford Superstorm. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, just look at them all being absolutely churned back. This is the pain which one needs to deal with later on when we get to the higher round. This is extra, bur yeah, extra burniness, so that's good. Lovely. Anything that gets in the range also has to deal with our fire, so... With a ball of lightnings, they have the ability to... so or the chance to freeze balloons when they attack them. So we've got the powers of fire with Jerry's fire, the powers of lightning with the superstorm, the powers of wind with the tornado, and the power of ice with a ball of lightnings' ability to freeze balloons. Unless it's just like holding them in their track rather than them going slightly blue... But I'll see you when these ZMGs are eventually popped. Ooh, a miracle's happened. Two of the ZMGs have now been popped and they're BFBs. And the other two have been popped. Lovely. Excellent. We have eventually got through this round, but it's going to be even more painful when round 97 comes around and we have those fortified ones. Because we increase in health over time. But also the Fortified now adds times two or however many times it adds onto the balloon itself. It either adds more or increases the resistance of said balloon itself. Oh great, more ZMGs. We'll be back after this short commercial break. There we go. I was about to have to plug my creator code in there. This was taking any longer. Oh, by the way. If you're ever shopping on the Balloons Tower Defense 6 store for Insta Monkeys or anything else in the store itself, then please, by all means, by using my creator code, you'll be able to help me out in any way, given shape, way, or possible. Let's see, round 89, a bunch of fortified Moabs and fortified BFBs. These are nowhere near as painful to deal with as ZMGs are. They can take more damage, and they travel even slower, the worst of both worlds. In some cases, it's a blessing, but others, it's not. In this case, it's not harmful, but it's just inconvenient. If it's like Prince of Darkness, then it is 
painful. Let's see, zoom, geez. So, DDT is getting flown back, which is brilliant. So, what are we going to spend the rest of our money on? Well, we're going to be buying a Moab Eliminator in order to help us out against the bad, because the Superstorm is not going to be able to deal with the bad on its own. It's going to need some help when it comes to tricking its health down so that the Superstorm can deal with the rest of the bad. The innards. The stuff that can be blown back, such as these abominations, for example. Oh, that's two of them down. That's pretty good. And that's the rest of them down and out. Lovely. They should all fall soon afterwards. Which is a blessing. Round 92 has been completed. Wait a minute, the Superstorm doesn't follow. It's just the little tornado. It's not the Superstorms themselves. Okay. So they travel in a straight line. Perhaps because it's such a violent storm that it cannot be contained by other means of nature. Unlike with the mini tornadoes, which can hone in on balloons because of their, sh their small size. They're very small size. Right, hopefully the rest of this game will go by a bit more quickly, but unfortunately round 97 is going to be an absolute bore when it comes to popping all these. And no, I'm not using the Merb Assassins to trickle down the help of the of the ZMGs, because that could be the difference between success and failure for those two Mega Pops. But how are we doing? 1.12 million. But alas, the final six rounds will contain the rest of the pops. So don't worry. Here we go, round 95. This round will go by quite quickly because of the sheer speed at which all of these balloons go at. The purple balloons the DDTs, the fortified Moabs, all of which are not even making it out of the straight line on the top of the map in order to enter one of the squares. Okay, so apply one of those. Let's see, extra camera damage will be very nice. And we'll apply the creepy idols and stuff on round 98. The elimination of these balloons are now at hand. With the support of a Moab Eliminator. 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 Yeah, I struggle to pronounce that word. We all have words that we struggle to pronounce. And if you say that there's no such thing as a word in which you have difficulty pronouncing, then you are lying to me. You is a liar right now. What are we going to do with the rest of our money? I think we're going to have a second overclock so we can constantly have it churning out when the bad spawn so that we always have the benefit of a overclock applied but at the moment i don't think we need to apply it do we will increase the fire rate of jerry's fire i don't know all i know is that this is going to be a very very tough round when it comes to patience of waiting for these to be popped but we've had no need of applying either the cross pass for the alchemist because this thing fires so slowly because of the factor that superstorm blows them back there's just no need to put anything else onto it acidic mixture dip looks like it's permanently on it and the strongest stimulant only is removed at very very minuscule moments of the game there we go finally some progress I wonder if, I wonder if there's if there's a hidden mechanic in the game. Well, not like a mechanic, but more like a failsafe for Ninja Kiwi's sake. Where, if you're taking too long in a round, then would Ninja Kiwi consider you stalling or farming or cheating in any given way, shape, or form? But then that would remove the aspect of regrow farming, if that is the case. Let's see now. Creepy idol here creepy idol there you have a creepy idol and you have a creepy idol everyone gets a creepy idol anyway the superstorms are hopefully not meeting their pierce counts so far but we're not having any struggles because they're all being blown back this is such an amazing tower i am so surprised it has as much firepower the Superstorm, obviously, but the other upgrades, I didn't expect to carry as far as they have done when it comes to this regard. There we go, another one. 
Let's see. Overclock is near for the second engineer of par I've parked down. Round 98 is there. And we have popped the rest of round 98. So this is why I want to place down Creepy Idol so bad. When the bad is here, we will have four of them at any given point in time. Now then. Now that we do have round 100, we're going to be applying the fifth tier middle path bomb towers ability onto the bad just to shave off enough health so that the super storm can do the rest let's see that's good yep keep applying that apply one more uh i still don't think that's enough though apply one more there we go the tail is now bandaged so that's good Let's see. Okay, that's over halfway, so let's apply another one. And do not touch the second. Do not touch two again, Flair, please. <laughs> if you want to succeed. Let's see. That's ready. Now that's halfway. Good. And the machine will be going down soon. And the DDD is going to instantly blown back and bopped. Okay, the only thing that could stop us now from achieving this is the alchemist being stubborn. But we've got our creepy idols down. We've got our glue up there. Anything else we could afford? <laughs> I like how the ZMG is constantly tilted. That's brilliant. I forgot to apply the uh, overclock actually because I'm so distracted by all this. And we have it. We have most certainly have gone dog diggly have it. We have the two mega pops with the druid. Without a question or shadow of doubt, you know, very fun to Mega Pops. Like, aside waiting for the ZMGs on certain rounds, that was an incredibly fun one to do. Like, I wouldn't think that this would be possible. So, yeah, we shaved off a lot of the bad self so that the Superstorm can finish it off. You always want something like a First Strike capability or a Moab Assassin or the Moab Eliminator in order to trickle down the bad health enough so that your desired tower can finish off the bad. Like, I feel like in some cases it's not possible to just rely on a single tower to deal all the damage to the bad because it could be the case where it's too late and you can't deal with the rest of the bad. Even if you manage to pop it, like the bad could be like at the end of a track where the glue rat is. And it would be far too late in order to deal with it. Although if, it, if that was the case with a Superstorm, maybe it can actually just blow back all the balloons there if you have a right upgrade. So, MIB is definitely a necessity. The Alchemist definitely in the early rounds was definitely a necessity. Probably not a huge amount later on, actually. If once you get Superstorm, then the Alchemist is kind of redundant in that way. But maybe the Alchemist does benefit the Superstorms themselves. Definitely like the Fawns and the Heart of Thunder and the Ball of Lightnings, but some upgrades are less benefited by external buffs such as Stronger Stimulant and Acidic Mixture Dip than other ones are. Definitely don't like the idea of Jar of Pickles, even though in this case, because it attacks so slowly, maybe we could have put down a Jar of Pickles for the Superstorm. But then again, I would have put it down for round 90 or possibly because of the fact that it won't benefit really against bads because it it yes it hits harder but that fire rate can sometimes be a boon especially on round 98 where you have a sheer amount of balloons to deal with and the thing that you want more than just add one damage is add 10 percent attack speed Sometimes you don't benefit from a jar of pickles, you actually lose out. But it depends on the tower itself. If it attacks slow enough to benefit from um, from the jar of pickles so that it actually does more damage per second, then apply the jar of pickles. But I didn't think it was necessary at all. So we have our wonderful creepy idols down. They're not necessity. I just like putting them down. And I like putting them down on round 98 so that when Geraldo gets to level 20, then he could put two more down when his shop is completely replenished. So that's all good. Jim's game, you can't put down one of the two Quincy's. And that is the non-living variant of the creepy... Sorry, not the creepy idol. The figurine itself. But it's worth more than actual Quincy does. Which I've heard that Quincy is not troubled by it whatsoever. So let me know what two mega pops you'd like to see me do next. 
maybe a particular ace one which biden diapers keeps going on about which is the 203a so never miss targeting and lots more darts that's going to be really interesting that's probably going to be a combination of a perma brew and a overclock and lots of things to slow down the balloons themselves and also an mib as well so they can actually pop ddts without the uh the perma brew until we can afford a perma brew thank you guys so much for watching and take care of yourselves everybody